I don't always look for the silver lining because I think sometimes accepting the fact that things can suck and that's okay is also important to process life. Not everything is fair and not everything has an answer. In my opinion, I'm not always that guy because if I looked for that, I think I would endlessly be mad forever looking for reasons and never be able to be present and happy because I would want to know the unknowable. What's up, everyone? If you're looking to be inspired, motivated, educated, and entertained, you have come to the right place. Welcome to the Bob Mom Podcast, the podcast where we explore your fitness, life mindsets, and actions that help you become unstoppable. You're worth it, and it's time to finally make changes in your life that will last you the rest of your life. Hey everyone, welcome to the Bomb Mom Podcast. I am Melissa Vogel, your host. Welcome to the show. Oh my God, this one is going to be so good. I have such an amazing guest on today with me. So I will dive into that first. I hope everyone is getting ready for school and going through the transition of getting kids back and handling it okay. Many of you are in the Reignite Yourself Boot Camp. Now, if you're not in, get in. It's a free five-day Reignite Yourself Boot Camp. We started August 15th. It's okay. Get in now. Go to the show notes. I'll put the link in there. Go to busy to bomb fitmom.com forward slash bootcamp. Get in and then you'll get the link. And we're a couple days in. It's totally okay. I know life can be crazy. And some of you listen to it and you're like, oh my God, I completely forgot. That's right. It's okay. Get in. I'm saving everything. I'm recording it and you can get in now. Now, if you're listening to this episode in a couple months from now, it's probably closed and maybe we're doing a new one. But right now for August, we started the 15th. Get in. Okay. I am helping you reignite that fire inside. I'm lighting that fire under your ass to get you moving and going. And after listening to today's podcast, trust me, you're going to want to get in. If you're not yet, you're going to want to start moving. You're going to get fired up because he is incredible. So with that being said, a couple other housekeeping things. Make sure you rate and review this podcast five stars and write a review. It's like leaving me a huge tip in my tip jar. I can't tell you how much it does for the show. And keep the suggestions for the reels and everything going because I pay attention to them. I check all my DMs. I'm like really, really active on Instagram. So that is the easiest way, honestly, to get a hold of me. If you have a question or whatever, shoot me a message on there. Or you can always email us at info at melissavogelfitness.com. But I love all the questions, the suggestions for show ideas. Keep them coming in. They've been just incredible. And I love hearing from you guys too of just saying like, oh my God, I love this episode. I love the show. It's awesome. You guys are the reason why I keep this show going. Now, this is a little bit longer episode. And yes, I'm talking super fast because I want to dive into it. (laughs) This isn't a sped up uh, or edited show. No, I'm just talking super fast because I have a lot of information to get out to you today. And I have to tell you about our guest. Today's guest is Phil Ketchedall, and he is the renowned celebrity trainer with an empowering fitness philosophy based on accountability, education, and dedication. Sound familiar, right? I love his principles on accountability, education, dedication, because it's exactly what I stand for and how we coach and train with Busy to Bomb Fit Mom. He was born in Montreal, Quebec, and Phil is a cancer survivor. Just wait till you hear his story. He is a top MBA honors graduate, and he's known for being a celebrity trainer. He founded Zone Nutrition and co-founded Transcend Health, all while being a devoted husband and father of four. Phil's success has made him a favorite among Hollywood's elite, and he now offers personal training in Atlanta and online coaching, providing nutrition and exercise consultations worldwide. Beyond fitness, he enjoys his family time, exploring languages, recipes, and embracing the latest tech trends. So Our conversation is so freaking cool. He has to come back on the show. I felt like we could have just talked for hours. I know I say that all the time, but Phil was awesome. And we see eye to eye so much on health and fitness. We even talk about the Barbie movie. (laughs) Like, oh my God, you've seen it twice already. Yes, you are now my new best friend. So it's, it's just a great episode, great conversation. And we need to talk more about body image, the truth about health and fitness, the truth about dedication, the truth about just taking it one day at a time. And Phil just does 
all of that just beautifully. So get your pens and papers, get ready to write and take notes. If not, we got your back. We got all in the show notes. Click the links, get into that free Reignite Yourself boot camp, and enjoy it. Enjoy the show, you guys. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Bomb Mom podcast. Today, we have Phil Catch It All on. Welcome to the show, Phil. Hey, thank you for having me, Melissa. We've already had great conversation, you guys, before we hit record. You missed it all. <laughs> It's true. We're like, oh, we missed it. Dang. Oh, we should have been recording. Now, I am stoked to have you on today. When I got approached and got your sheet across my desk, I was like, oh, he's cool. Yes, we're going to have him on. And we have similar philosophies about fitness Flatter. and health. I'll tell my kids someone said I'm cool. Yeah, I know. Will you tell mine <laughs> after too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll try to Phil, Melissa, like, guess what? <laughs> Thank you. I'll give you my daughter's cell phone number and just let her know because sometimes <laughs> I'm not that cool to them. <laughs> and I, I recently, I took on a new job. I am the strength and training coach of my daughter's high school volleyball team. Oh man. Varsity. I have no a senior. Pressure. I know. I have a senior and a freshman on. And so every day their peers and the team and everyone's exposed to their crazy ass mom. <laughs> and I'm just always That's like, incredible though. I'm sorry, but how you guys do anything is how you do everything. Quit slacking. Like, <laughs> mom. Mom, they don't have parents like you. They've probably never heard that. Can she not come back? She's cool, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I told them in the beginning. That's got to be fulfilling though. That's awesome. It is. I love that I'm learning that, man, if we really want to make a change, because I'm not into training kids and teens. Like I thought I was earlier in my career. I'm just not, but maybe more now, but I love that I'm being able to impact the younger generation and just open their freaking eyes to the truth about health and fitness. Like I said to him the other day, oh, I was like, absolutely. girls, I don't even care what you weigh. It's not about that number on the scale. And they were like, what? Yeah. It's a, it's a, they're like, wait, no, that's all social media says or TikTok or I don't know. I have two teenage daughters. So I, I get it, but I don't get it. Cause I'm like, I don't know what's happening, but can I keep you safe? <laughs> how do, what do I do? Right. Yeah. How do I protect you? So I'm dying to know how did you launch your like health and fitness career? Like how did this become your thing? I love yeah. hearing everyone's stories. This is the story of inevitabilities. So like I grew up in Montreal, so I'm bilingual, like, and it sounds silly, but that plays into it because I had a very British mother and a French Canadian dad. So even down to why my last name is pronounced weirdly is because I had a British mom saying a French last name. So in any case, <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I'll, we can get into that. But that's a whole story. But I had leukemia from three till eight. So I was like, I'm the baby of four. I was the golden boy. I was also an accident, happy accident, but uh, got leukemia. And my parents were super healthy. My dad was like a bodybuilder, runner, businessman. My mom was a homemaker, but like always just like jump rope and yoga and her just super healthy home cooked meal. So I grew up very healthy, but that guarantees you nothing, which is, it gives you the best shot. I tell everyone, it gives you the best shot, but it guarantees nothing. So I had leukemia, cured, eight years old. I was like bald in my kindergarten photo. And I could tell you all about methotrexate and lumbar punctures. Like I knew all this stuff. I was interested in what was happening to my body. So like I had all the medical terminology and I had transfusion and, you know, everything that cancer was. And it, when I got it in the early nineties, that was, that was 90, 90, they diagnosed me. It was still like mm, liver die. Like they didn't know because it wasn't as right. far along as, so the experimental treatment they used on me is now the standard for leukemia for kids. So I got very lucky. Two years after that, my father, basically, he was this fit guy, businessman. He came home and he was forgetting weeks of things at a time. And my mom's like, that's not normal. Like he's the most competent and he spoke multiple languages and traveled around the world. So long story short, my mom was like, no, something's not right. Brought him in and he had metastasized. It was lung cancer, but by then it was all over his body. And basically we joke, he was such a badass and so tough and strong and old school that like he just had been shrugging off what were probably symptoms forever. Just like, oh, I'm getting old. I'm in my 40s. I'm tired. But they gave him two weeks to live. They're like, it's everywhere. We don't know how you're okay. And he sat us down. He made us a promise. He's like, I'm going to get one kid's more birthday. And he made it through all four and passed away the day after my last, after the sister's birthday. He just held on to the end. So Stop. all, of, yeah. So, you know, life shattering, but also life shaping. So I was only 11 we were 11, 13, 16, 18. So all of my siblings, you know, went through our fuck you phase to life, to God, to everything, had our different roundabout ways, but essentially we all tried careers. I have an MBA. I worked for business, got a corporate job and all of us came back to, no, that's not who we are. We, we want to help people be healthy and happy and realize 
life is short. So I started training for fun. And then I was like, no, I need a real job. And I went to college and more college and multiple degrees in different languages and traveled the world. And I was just like, nah, this ain't it. It's all about training. It's I want to help people live a better and more fulfilling life. So it was this calling to where I tried to do other things. And I've been even successful at them at times, but I wasn't happy. And I was very grateful to have partners who supported that whenever any phase of my life, like, no, you got it, babe, whatever you need to do. And so it was kind of this thing where I always loved it, but I couldn't escape it because it's what I do. And it's, it's who I am. It's what I know from literal childhood to every iteration of what you can go through. By 25, I was married, divorced, had four kids, had cancer, lost a parent to cancer. Now I'm 35, remarried, have another child. My wife now is my high school girlfriend and my ex-wife is my best friend and lives six houses over. So like- Oh my God. I, I'm not trying to brag, but I'm like, fuck, I've lived a lot of life in 35 years. So oh my it's the God. experience. Yeah, it's the experience to, uh, oh, and changed religion. I, I used to be Mormon, hence the get married early thing. So, you know, if you want a fun life story, I'll write that book one day. Yeah, But I couldn't should. escape it. The answer to the question is I couldn't escape it. It's who I am. It's what I do is trying to help people live and fulfill their lives physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, or lack thereof. Whatever you want. I want to try and help this life be a little less painful for people. God. That is incredible. I have so many questions. <laughs> and <laughs> podcast end. <laughs> yeah, you go. Okay, thanks for coming on, Phil. We'll talk later. <laughs> oh my God. Loaded, loaded question. You didn't know what you were right? going to get. Well, you know, you, you get a mouthful when you ask like, so how did it start? It's like, oh, one day I walked into a gym and wanted to be a trainer. No, that's not. Exactly. That's, never the, that's never the response. Yeah. I totally get it. My degree was in social work and I knew like I wanted to help people, train people and it all started you know, like was around my childhood and what I went through and, you know, help in the home and a social worker, like, and I'm like, that's what I want to do. And I know I want to help people. And then it just evolved. I was like, I'm not doing the work completely that I wanted to do. And I felt like I was just slapping band-aids on a lot of stuff. And my mom was very health conscious and very aware. She was like way ahead of like her time. I mean, she was yeah. learning and reading about like cow's milk when I was a kid. And she was like, the hormones in this and she'd like cut out newspaper articles <laughs> remember when we had newspapers oh my gosh right those were the days. yeah and she'd like cut them out she's like i just read this and found this I'm, and everyone's like you're crazy your kids aren't <laughs> gonna have strong bones if you don't give them milk and oh my gosh yeah, yeah i was so that's where that started for me but i was like i go into these homes as like a social worker and trying to like help and i'm like but you're feeding your family this and like everyone's overweight and i was open to that you know very early and i'm like I can't, I need to help people in a different way. So I can relate. I can relate. Did the fact that you had leukemia as a child and your dad had a form of cancer, did they ever connect that? I'm just, now I'm just curious, like personally, just curious. Yeah. Did they ever connect no, that to no, like where you live? Question. Fields, you know, with spring? Yeah, no, on me, they did a study on EMF and like, cause we lived under a high voltage, like power thing. So they followed me for 12 years basically. And the conclusion was inconclusive. So neither yes nor no. And then my dad's was lung cancer. So there's no real relationship. My brother had testicular cancer. They caught it early. It was an easy fix, but like the fuck, like three males, all of them. So now we all have kids. My sisters have kids and everyone's like, now the, the girls apparently are fine, live forever. No issues. Let's just all look. If you have a boy, catch it out, look down. And yeah. so it's so interesting because there seems like there should be, but there's usually you inherit uh, the BRCA gene. So breast cancer, or uterine cancer, or there's correlation for certain other things but ours were so completely distinct that they're like mm, bad luck we don't know it's very mm -hmm. strange mm -hmm. it is it's super interesting I'm always curious whenever my mom has parkinson's disease terrible awful horrendous disease i wish it upon like no one and i'm always trying to go back and look and find research like where she grew up and like what was she exposed to and there's some studies but everything like I said it's inconclusive there's no real answers to it it's one of the hardest things in life accepting not only do we not always know but we may never know and just that, oh like you do what you can but you can't control it and yeah some things suck and that's I okay i'm a very optimistic person but i don't always look for the silver lining because i think sometimes accepting the fact that things can suck and that's okay is also important to process life. Yeah, yeah. Not everything's fair and not everything has an answer. In my opinion, I'm not always that guy because if I look for that, I think I would endlessly be mad forever looking for reasons and never be able to be present and happy because mm -hmm. I would want to know the unknowable. Right. I get that a lot of, you know, when people see the way I eat or feed my kids and, you know, and I tell them, I'm like, we're different. You know, I've said before on the, yeah. my, my podcast, 
my kids have never had pop or so I'm from Michigan pop. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell like, I was like, I'm hearing that accent. I'm like, where is she from? The nose. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's the nose. It's the, and, but like, I tell I'll like, say I'm, sorry. And tomorrow I hear it. <laughs> but I just, you know, I tell them we're different and people just aren't used to that and that's okay. But then, you know, you always get those people that are like, everyone's going to die or you could die and get hit by a bus tomorrow. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm not dead yet. And I'm still here and I want to give us a fighting chance. <laughs> and I tell my kids, like, everyone has like this bucket, pretend everyone has this invisible bucket and what you put into that bucket is determined by you. So if we're talking health and fitness, you know, if you're drinking Slurpees and you're eating a lot of candy, like you're filling that bucket up higher and higher, the more we can keep our bucket empty or very low, there's room to enjoy treats. There's room to grow and hopefully not get cancer or have cells multiply and divide, you know, and that's why we keep our bucket low. So when we're at home, we control what we can control. We're not going to eat out of plastic. We're not going to microwave in it. Are you going to go out and go to school and get something? And, you know, someone's going to give you something that's in plastic. Yes, but your bucket's empty. Your bucket's very yeah, low like and empty. You know? Yeah. I mean, it's essentially controlling the environment you can. So then when you go out into the world and go other places or have fun, you're like, well, yeah, if we already know the bucket's going to get filled other places, then let's simplify it at home. And that's, I think that's a very healthy approach. It's so true because I think in the, I'm going to take it TM trademark. The zeitgeist right now in wellness is shifting a lot more from this decades long lifespan. How long are you going to live? Everyone's now talking about this health span. Like, okay, you can live long, but what is your quality of life? How do you feel? And that's kind of what I try to approach with my kids is very similar. Is like, we'll sit down and say, okay, well, there's everything's trade-offs, right? This means you're going to have less of that. And more of this means less of that. And it applies to everything in life. Nothing is free. Nothing comes without consequences, be they positive or negative or simply trade-offs like for like and our bodies are so important so I used to bring my kids rock climbing all the time and then my girls were like oh my gosh I can do pull-ups I'm the only girl that can do pull-ups like haha secret exercise for three years you didn't know and so there's ways to even kind of fit things in where it doesn't necessarily seem too arduous because I also never wanted to be like the lecture dad or the like oh I don't know the mom's fun and uh, dad's boring or the reverse or you know we try to be a team and how we parent and approach things very much like this is important. This is a decision you can make on your own. This is a decision we're making for you. Sorry, when you're 18, you can figure it out. Or like there's different levels, right? But I think when it comes to health, like, yeah, coming from a family who are like, no, 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 we know cancer. We know this, like the world's going to do things and you can't guarantee anything, but let's give you the best shot. Let's see, let's reduce the epigenetic turn on of what we can screw up. Yes. Uh, so I think that's important. I think yes. that's important for sure. Yeah. I think a lot of people, you had said something about like, you're talking about consequences, like everything good, bad, you know, everything's going to come with consequences. And I don't think people today, especially moms are like really grasping that because they're like giving, giving, giving to their family. Right. And they're like, I, and they're, and they're like the best mom and they never slow down. And, and the number one thing is like, I don't have time. It must be nice. And they say it to me, like, must be nice to have time, Melissa, you know, everyone doesn't, you know, I'm like, you think I'm a stay at home mom? Are you kidding me? I have like 20 jobs. <laughs> I'm like, I just like auditioned for a commercial in front of casting agents, then podcasted with a doctor over in, you know, Quebec. <laughs> and then I went to the gym and then I trained high school students, but you're right. Yeah, I, just you're sit around and, I just, I just do nothing. And that's why I have time to go to the gym, but people don't understand that. Like that's going to catch up to you. There's consequences. And you might not be experiencing them now. And they're like, well, there's nothing I can do. I can, there's nothing I can change. And I'm like, there is, and it's going to hit you later. You might not just be experiencing the awful ones now. They're like, well, my fat pants just don't fit me anymore. I can deal with that right now. I'll just buy new ones. And I'm like, Ugh. yeah, no, there's so much to that. I mean, to that point. So kind of I, a trainer, that's what I do. And, and I've always thought like, oh, is that erudite or elite enough of a title? Like I have these degrees and blah, blah, blah. And I, I fancy myself somebody who likes to learn and an autodidact. Then I'm like, what, what kind of ego is in the way? Like I am a trainer and I'm also a coach and that's what I love. And I don't need to be like, sometimes you see these contrived titles. Like I like to help people feel better. And I've done it in the celebrity world with tons of people and it's fun, but that's where I found my happy place. Like I'm super busy as well. And it's like, okay, where can I add value? Where can I add my skill set? And where do I enjoy spending my time? I'm not doing the sports thing, but my son wants me to be on his chest. He wants me to be like the leader of the chess club. And it's hilarious because he loves 
Uh-huh. Video games and sports and working out. He's nine. Video games, sports, fishing, working out, outside stuff. But then also he's like nerdy and chess. And I'm like, that's great. Like expand your horizons. I feel like one good thing in this modern world, at least when I was growing up, was very clicky. And I always felt like it was even worse in the American movies. In Canada, we didn't really have jocks and all that. But oh, uh, there yeah. were definitely like cool and less cool and band kid. And that always kind of made me sad. And I, I didn't really fall in anywhere because I was like, cancer kid i don't know so everyone felt bad for me i'm like are you actually my friend (laughs) but this interesting thing where now i feel like kids can like country and rap and pop punk music and they can go across the friend group and all these things and you can be in chess club and sport club and i do like that about this modern age kids seem to Mm -hmm. be more kind and loving to one another so i don't know i just like that's the message i've been trying to do is find more fulfillment the hollywood and the training and the things i've done that's cool but giving somebody an eight pack for a movie or for a TV show is less fulfilling. I still love it. It's fun. I'm not going to say no, but that's right. not all I pursue now. Now I pursue, I love being on podcasts, like talking with you. I, I love speaking engagements. I do a lot of pro bono work for make a wish foundation because I got to do the make a wish when I was a kid. Cause they're like, Oh, will he make it? We don't know. I wished for an oh elephant. Uh, spoiler. They did not give it to me because you can't own an elephant, but <laughs> I got a good wish. I, it was a good life. And it's just so interesting to me to see there's so much questions in this health world now. And that's like, Uh that's where I'm currently finding the fulfillment is training and coaching and helping people figure out, I'm going to go back to your bucket analogy. Like what can we do to maximize the quality of your life right now to give you the best shot at being a happy, healthy person. And let's go back and let's discuss that together. And I I take that a very personal approach. That's what I I like engaging with people one-on-one. Same. Why do you think people are so, I'm always interested in hearing other you know experts on this topic of like why do you think people are so interested in just the instant now gratification and they're not looking at it in the way you just described it of like living the best life for the longest t- amount of time everyone's like no i need 30 pounds off now mm, i have a wedding i i need it like gone or yeah just this if i can just just get my stomach down then i'm going to be happy like what's your take on that i wish i had a good i mean right now the terzepatide, which is Mojerno or Ozempic, semaglutide. These are all the rage. And before that, it was clenbuterol, albuterol, and ephedrine and all the things. And I was in the bodybuilding world. That's where I started with figure and bikini training and being a bodybuilder myself. Funny, because I've come very far from that now. But I think there's something to seeing these physiques and these social media things online where people, A, they don't know the decades of work that went into it. People look at me and they're like, oh, you still look great. I'm like, well, I worked out for 18 years straight and I still work out, just not as hard. I would hope my body has held up, right? right. And then these people who are like, oh, wait, I'm going to make good decisions now. I haven't made good decisions for 17 years, but I expect in the next six months to lose 40 pounds, have an eight pack and do this. And they're like, that seems reasonable. I'm like, cool. When you got your job, did you think you'd be CEO? in six months? Or did that maybe take a little time? Like, I'll try and bring it down to some metaphors or something you can understand. And one of the big things that I'm really into, I'll never out individuals or people who are taking drugs or enhancements, but I'll be like, here's what a person looks like that's normal. Here's what a person looks like that's questionable. Here's what's realistic in three months in a transformation normal. Here's three months where they didn't say it, but I could probably tell you exactly what chemicals they were taking. Like, And that's one of the things that bothers me is like, uh, there's that TikTok kid who does natty or not. I find it hilarious because he does it to both men and women, but like, are you enhanced or not? I'm completely fine with with anyone taking whatever they want and personal choice and like the bodybuilding world. And I think this is fascinating. I have have clients on Ozempic medically who needed to lead it, but the the lying and the hypocrisy really bothers me saying I did this with this protein. And then I'm like, no, it wasn't the protein. And then like denying it to the grave, like, there's been a lot of scandals about that lately, or just simply, or, or simply taking it as a shortcut and learning no habits. If you take the things, you have to build a work ethic, you have to build self-confidence. And so if a medication or a supplement or a plan or a coach, there's so many different ways to give you accountability and structure and plans, and people need those, and I support those. But there also has to be a system to exit that world, to kind of wean off the person you've become codependent on. Maybe it's your coach. Maybe it's your trainer. Maybe it's me for some of my clients. We check in, we see what's that. Maybe it's a drug, maybe it's a, whatever the case is. And so psychologically and physiologically, I think people want the shortcut to answer that initial question because it's simpler. It takes less work and it works. There are drugs that will change your body more in four months than four years of work. 
well, fuck, why are we going to do the four-year one if I could do the four-month one? But there are trade-offs. There are consequences. There are potential health issues, right? And so I always tell people to, what are your real goals? Like, why do you want? Do you really, like, is it that important? Will the wedding suck if you're five pounds different, right? Will it be any less important or beautiful of a life memory, your daughter's ex or your marriage ceremony Y or your kids this or whatever the case is. And then we really drill down to what's the actual problem. And then half the time I feel more like a therapist to the point where I'm re-entering school for, to do a PhD in psychology because I realized, shoot, this is the thing I'm actually passionate about. I am, yeah. Because I believe that the mindset, like that's the precursor to everything. And it's something that I've worked on so much that I'm like, oh wait, I can be more effective at coaching and changing the physical if I can, instead of refer people out to people and other experts, which I'll always do. If someone comes to me like, Phil, I want to do X, Y, Z. And it's like boxing or Zumba or hit or anything that I'm an expert in. I'm like, cool, go see Kate, go see, but like, I'm not, those aren't my things. I know my things and I know the things I'm not great at. And I would never pretend to be a profession. I'm not. So I would like to get, you know, more insight and formal education so that I can do that. Because I think that in this world of instant gratification and there's the books, there's the, the dopamine problem, everything now with social media, electronics, like, there has to be some way to combat that. And I think Huberman and other people are doing a great job, but I'd like to join that field and see how I can right. help. Yeah. If not a huge audience, at least the people in my life that I love have a little better life. Uh-huh. This, God, this is such a good conversation. It's so refreshing too, because I've had some dumb conversations with people like at the gym lately <laughs> on this. Oh, I'm sure. Oh my God. I don't know what, it, if it's just the season or just different people are in there, but it's, this is very refreshing. And I was going to, I'll share a story with you after <laughs> I was going to share one. I'm like, yeah, Please I can't do. share it on here. I'll share it with you after, but no, the moms can't hear it. Yeah, no, <laughs> but this mindset talk and how habits play such a huge role in it. This is one of the reasons why I created after I transformed my life into like busy to bomb fit mom. And I took what I did to transform my life and, and created the program. And I train this way now and work with people because I can have my hands in with their like mindset and, you know, their vision and who they want to become along with their training, along with their nutrition and other things. But I tell people all the time, I'm like, ladies, if you do not get mentally fit as well as physically fit, your changes, your results, they're never going to last. Like you're going to develop this yep. body and do a stupid, you know, like six week boot camp. Oh, great. I paid $500 and now I like transform my body all those people end up gaining it back because they're in this body. They did no work up here. And it's almost like they oh, don't absolutely. even know each other. And then you don't ha mm -hmm. have the habits and the determination or like dedication or all the things and learn how to be consistent over a long, not just six weeks. And you don't know how to maintain this new person at all. A hundred percent. Yeah. This again, that short term, anyone could do something hard for a certain amount of time, but then when life gets busy again, what do you do when you go on vacation and you just like, you know, you have sugar and alcohol for a week. Cool. Have the fun vacation, whatever. But if there's not a plan to get back, one week becomes a month, becomes two months. And then you're like, oh, shoot, like consistency and accountability are very difficult if you don't have a structure in place to be like, oh, I'm going to have a call-in buddy or I'm going to put it on the calendar. If we keep everything in our head, and I think this goes for basically everything, then it just kind of just molds and rusts in there. We have to get it out. We got to get feelings out. We get thoughts out. We have to also get goals and plans out. You have to write them out. If you physically do it, the likelihood of it happening when you physically write it out is like fourfold of just thinking it. It's dramatic. So if you know that, go do it. If you want to lose 10 pounds, moms, like go do this thing. If I want to do this, if I even want to train, I'm so busy too. With I got three companies. I do this. I have the kids. I have this other thing I'm trying to start. If I don't put my own workout session on a calendar, one of my great friends, he's, he's the world's strongest man, Martin Lises. He's one like you know, all those big stones and stuff. And I would say, Hey, you're doing all these things. When do you have time to train yourself? He said, well, I'm my most important client. So I just put myself on there. I was like, that blew my, my mind because I was training 12 people a day in person. And I do online around the world. I have clients in Dubai and Norway. I love what I do, but it gets to the end of the day. I realized last week I'm in a funk. I had a whole week without working out. That's crazy. Oh. That's what I do. I'm a workout guy. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> and I remind myself I'm my own most important client. And so I scheduled out all next week. 11 to 12, I put my workout, my plan. I'm like, I'm telling everyone what to do. I've been doing this forever and I didn't do any of it last week. What's going on, Phil? <laughs> and so, yeah, it's just, it's so important to have structure and plan. And like, I told my wife, hey, keep me accountable. Don't let me come home if I didn't do my, my workout. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. She's like, cool, me too. 
and yeah. <laughs> it's uh, life is tiring. That's not an excuse. So uh-huh. it's important to have people there supporting you. I love that you admitted that though. Like, oh, because I, I got no lies here, man. I got, I'm an open book. Today's episode is brought to you by AG1. When I was introduced to AG1 about a year ago, it was a no brainer because I was already on the lookout for something that was going to support my entire body, cover all of my nutritional needs, but was easy and simple. AG1 does exactly that. I was looking for better gut health. I wanted increased energy to support my immune system. And I hated taking all the pills and vitamins that I was taking. AG1 is simple and easy, and it doesn't taste disgusting. I love my new morning routine, and you guys know as a mom, I'm always looking for something that's quick, healthy, trustworthy, that takes care of all of my nutritional needs. And with AG1, all you do is take one scoop in your water, shake it up, drink it, and it doesn't taste disgusting. I actually look forward to it every single morning. And when it comes to my supplement routine, I need something that's easy and it truly works. I don't have time for a mess. I don't have time for all the supplements, especially with traveling. It's so easy to take with me. And then I know I've covered all of my bases when I'm not at home. Now, for all of you moms out there, you know how busy we can be. So if you're looking for self-care that's quick and easy, try AG1 and get one free year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packets with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash bomb mom. That's drink, D-R-I-N-K-A-G-1.com forward slash bomb mom and check it out. People just don't get that importance of blocking it off and putting it on your calendar and making sure that you are on there. And I talk a lot about too, I was just talking to my group the other day about the importance of not lying to yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I've, I I've admitted done like, it. Oh, like, and we'll say, oh, I'll work out later. I'll work out later, but you don't have it scheduled in. Or like just yesterday I had, I went to the gym, I was hitting legs and my kids got home early and I promised him I'd take him to the, to the lake. And I'm like, I'm not done with my workout yet. And I only have this many time, this much time. So I'm like, okay, Melissa, you're going back out in the garage. You're pulling it out. You're finishing your legs at night. And it was so fucking hot and the mosquitoes were out and I had the garage door open and I did not want to do it. And I hadn't eaten yet. So I'm like, you can have a snack. You can turn on the fan that'll blow the mosquitoes away. You can do it. Like, put your big girl panties on and get out there. And I went back out there and I'm like, here I am. Fuck my life. But here I am and I'm doing it. And I'm like, I have to keep the promise to myself. You do. And it's so funny. You feel so much better. You're like, I mean, I can never understand the experience of having a child, but I know moms like my wife, everyone jokes about pregnancy amnesia, right? You're like, this sucks and everything hurts and the birthing process, like for many women, it's a very difficult process. And then three months, you're like, I'm going to have another one. It was great. And I'm like, you told me it was miserable. What is, and I feel like it's the same thing with workouts. Like every workout you finish, every single one of them, no one's ever regretted a workout. You feel better. You got the pump, your blood's like, you got the endorphin, everything's good. And the very next day, why don't we remember that? Why is like, oh, I'm tired. I'm sore. We're like, don't we just remember that for the last like 850 workouts we've done in the last three years, everyone has felt good and we felt happier and we felt more alive after it doesn't stick. I don't know what evil, like biological impulse is inside of us. That's like, nah, we're not going to let this stick, but I have to fight that all the time because it's so interesting that it just doesn't stick. It doesn't. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's from like our caveman days or something. And it's like embedded in us. So we got our asses up and hunted every day or like gathered. Sure. To like, oh. oh, absolutely. I think it's like, no, no, no. Life is good. You achieved things where you're not dying all the time. Sit still, buddy. Sit still. Mm-hmm. And then we have to, for. I mean, complacency is because our lives are in a way too easy and everything is too convenient to where that was it. We cavemen were ripped because they had to be ripped to live. Yeah. We don't have to be ripped to live. So when we, when we force it on ourselves, our central nervous, our hormones, like, ah, everything gets crazy. And then the irony is the more you do it, the more you control your system instead of your system controlling you. And right. that's really it is the more you exercise and the more you exercise your body and your brain and everything. And the more you make decisions, that muscle memory applies equally to choices yeah. and then they become easier and easier. And that's why I've never been good in group anything because I think it comes back down to like, I want to know what's going on in that brain of yours Mm -hmm. to everybody's like, I can help people one-on-one around the world because this coaching situation where I'm like, well, that worked for your friend or that worked for your mom or your brother, but why isn't that working for you? Mm -hmm. Just saying move more, eat less. That's not working. Why? Like, what can we drill down to? What, how can we make it easier if you're tired every day? 
I have uh, one of my clients, she works for Goop and she has crazy days and she works and she produces and all those things. I can't do the workouts, but there's a way. So we found a way to do 20 minute workouts a day and we made a nutrition plan that worked. Nice. And we just did, and we, we found a way for her to do what seemed impossible. And it's not ideal or perfect or what I would recommend, but it's infinity percent better than doing nothing. And we'll upgrade that over time. And I think too many people are so obsessed with the complete fabrication and illusion, especially projected on women to be perfect and everything. I've seen Barbie twice with my wife and my kids and my daughter's like, this movie is great. I don't even understand the half of it. I'm like, why am I crying? And also Ryan Gosling, shit, he is hot. And Margot Robbie, everything about the movie. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it too. (laughs) But I was like, man, if this is getting me and there wasn't a dry and I'm looking over like, fuck, like there's so much expectation and just realizing that you can work really hard, but progressing 1% at a time. Like if you set a plan to do everything perfect tomorrow, you're already going to fail. Mm-hmm. But if you set a plan, I'm going to work out tomorrow and I'm going to eat right. And then you kind of follow the 12 step models. I'm, I'm not sober in recovery, but I've always loved from them the fact that just worry oh, about no. today. And if you just do today, every day, that's forever. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whoa, again, that's a great mind thought. Like, whoa, but just do today, work out today, eat clean today. Don't think about tomorrow and then do it tomorrow. And then all of a sudden you accrue weeks and months and years and you have habits, you have a lifestyle, you have something that you can make into what you just dreamed of. And that's really mm-hmm. the difference is, is doing the daily thing. Just, that, yeah. Just doing it. Just one day at a time. That's so true. And there's so much hate on that movie too. Like people love it. And then people are totally hating it. And I'm like, how can you put down a movie that is making females listen? Like my daughters and I, when we got back from it, we talked about it. I'm not kidding you for like, two hours straight. I literally oh, yeah. pulled up my phone and videoed, you know, part I'm talking about the, the speech. And I was like, of Oh course. shit, Absolutely. this girl's go-. Cause I didn't know it was coming. I didn't know. I, I was like, yeah. saw what was happening in the movie. And then I like hit record. They made me play it for them. Like over they're like, yeah. play that part again, play that part again. And it yeah. just well, I think- sparked so much conversation. I loved it and I'm not going to create enemies or politics or anything, but from what I, like the people I know who didn't love it, at least the majority I saw online, like, like, oh, it's so bad. I walked out of it. I'm like, well, you didn't get to the end where everything came full circle. Yeah. And it wasn't this like overthrow the men, hate everyone. It was like, hey, let's be honest. You guys have fucked us over for a really long time, but also we don't want to do that back. We just want to say, hey, I took you for granted. and didn't respect you, but also you did that to me. And how can we figure out how to work? together yes and help build each other up instead of tear each other down i'm like if you miss the whole point of the movie I, I don't know what to tell you yeah it was let's give everybody the shot to respect each other and more than anything to respect and love themselves that she didn't have to ask permission to be human like to be bur- to be you like your love i thought i got it i loved it oh i got it yeah you are ken enough phil you are ken enough that's actually, my birthday's on Saturday. My wife got me the uh, full on, the can enough tie dye sweater, but it won't come in time. So she's like, I have to tell you early because it won't actually come. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I love that. I'm, I absolutely love it, that. But well, I'm just, I don't know. I just think it's tough nowadays, especially with like females and body imaging and all of the, you know, Photoshopping that can happen and filters. Ugh, and nightmare. I made a reel yesterday and just posted it up. It was just, I think it was, I'm in the gym or I don't know. I'm working out. And it's just me lifting like arms and biceps and triceps. And it's talking about, I did it over Mel Robbins reel. And she was talking about Mm -hmm. like how never let your mood dictate your action, you know? And oh, um, oh, so good. And I I was like, incredible. this is true. Like, I did not feel like I just got back from a four day camping trip. I unpacked a trailer. I drove three hours. I drove the RV. I was like exhausted. I'm like, I need to go to the gym. Like it has to get done. And I made a reel about it and people were commenting and DMing me like, oh, you don't look, you don't look as ripped as you do or something. And I'm like, hey, why do you think you can say that? Are you serious? Mm -hmm. And I'm lean right now. Like I'm, I'm lean, but it was just the angles. Yeah. Look, I I mean, this is an audio podcast, but I'm seeing you. You look incredible. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) But I'm like, I have skin. I do. I do have (laughs) fat on my body and everything is tricky with angles and people don't, people don't understand that. Like I can turn to one side and I can look this thin. I'm straight on. I'm boxy. I got ribs. I'm brought up top. Like I'm boxy. And that's the angle that it was. And I'm just Mm -hmm. like, I'm going to make more of this, more reels where I look like shit to to other people, because this is the female (laughs) human body. Like we have skin. I've had babies. Like I just think this just needs to be normalized more. And I like the girls wore short shorts. Totally wore short shorts. 
And my little one was like, are you going to wear those? Like you can see like your legs on the backside. And I'm like, that is called fat and cellulite. And mom's totally okay with it. And I'm going to show these girls that it's okay with it because this is what a real body looks like. Like, you know, hundred percent. Yeah. I, oh my God. It's just so distorted. I can't know what it's like, but I just see it. And I was, so because my dad passed away when I was 11, he was the best. He was like the best. And that's not just my nostalgic memory of him. Like, I feel like there was thousands of people who you know, it was like, he fixed my roof. He did this. Like all these stories came out. He was just oh. like a quiet guy that did the good things and never got the spotlight, you yeah. know? And it came back in spades. But so as, you know, I was raised by my mom and two older sisters and my brother was cool, but he was like busy and doing work and doing other things. So like, I grew up with just a bunch of female energy. It's probably why I became a weightlifter, like ah, so much estrogen, but I also learned invaluable skills. Oh my gosh. It's so tough to be you guys. And this world is so different from my world and, and communication and all these things. And it is the, the amount of, I mean, again, we're, we're going to bring everything back to Barbie is what was it? It's like men, men hate us. Women hate us. We all hate each other. Like if we even hate our own selves or whatever, when the teenager is going off and uh-huh. it's just like, gosh, everyone bringing each other down. And, and it's so, I don't know. It's, I am optimistic and hopeful for things moving in the right direction, but if we can't accept people's bodies and just being them and where they want to be and how they're working and yeah, social media, there's been some good about it. I think it's great to connect us, but the amount of distortion and fillers and lies and all that, it really is a problem where people want images they want things that aren't even real or yes. even i mean i know some of the top fitness model people in the world and they'll go to a shoot for a week and get like 500 outfits and do a thousand changes and then they'll do the diuretics and the water thing and they'll look perfect for a week but then they'll drip that out for a year as if they look like that year round i know these guys and girls they look great all the time but they don't look like that they look mm-hmm. like that for seven out of 365 and a quarter days yes. and the other days they don't and it's just, it creates this, again, this illusion of perfection that A is not real and B is not even attainable without insane effort and enhancements. Right. But that's the moment we snapshot. It's like the perfection at their top, like this will last five hours. I used to do shoots like that. I have several. Yeah, me I'm too. Just like so hard. And I'm like, They're so hard. Dude, do you so see I got me out of bodybuilding. <laughs> you know what I had that day? Two blueberries and zero water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in well, those I'm, days, I'm flip- so hard. Oh, I can't. I mean, and, and I'm going to flip the script. I'm going to ask you the interview question. It's like, I've done that too. And did you at least find, I don't know if it's the same for you, but like, I don't do that anymore. And it's interesting to, I feel healthier. I feel happier, but there was this almost mourning of like the fact that I'm like, oh, I have to come to terms with the fact that I'll actually never be that strong and ripped and look that good again. Oh my God. Yes. And like, realizing like, oh, interesting. What's next? Like, if I don't do this and take this and do the, like, if I'm not that guy, what guy am I? And what's my new place in the health and wellness space? And that's been my last decade, like 21 to 25 bodybuilding, all the things, figuring out works doesn't work. And then 25 to 35 now is like, okay, dad, married, kids, girl, kids, shoot. How do I be a good example? Like all of the things that to me in my life and my values are important. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, and then also like take all these things. I'm like, I already had cancer once. I don't want to get it again. What was I doing making these dumb choices? And so <laughs> it makes you reevaluate everything. But yeah, did you experience that? Like you look incredible and we're healthy people, but do you know what I'm asking? Like that oh, peak, absolutely. Peak best you shoot. Do you ever be times you look back like, I don't miss it. But then you do, you catch yourself like, but fuck, I like to great. Yeah. <laughs> I did look hot. I did look amazing. No, that's funny you bring that. Cause I don't think anyone ever talks about that or admits that, but it is it truly is like a morning and a learning of like, oh my God, if I'm not that person anymore, who am I? And is that okay? You know, and will people look at me now and see me then and compare me that to then be like, oh damn, she lost herself. Yeah. Like, I don't ever want people to look at me and be like, oh damn, you know, and that's get, hard. Cause then you're letting go of like, well, do you even really give a fuck what they think? <laughs> no. Right. So what are we worried about then? You know, but yeah, that it it is learning. And I think even people that maybe not were like super ripped and now we're just ripped. (laughs) They can relate to this point. You know, they can relate because a lot of people deal with this with being really overweight and that's their identity. And if they shift and they're losing weight, shit, who am I now? I've always been the fat sister. I've always been the bigger one. Mm -hmm. I've always been the one that just makes everyone food and just, you know, but I don't do that anymore. And that's probably a struggle for a lot of people listening too. of like, oh my God, 
I might be afraid of going next level because I won't know who I am without this extra 30 pounds. Yeah, it happens in Hollywood. I, I can't name the names, but there's people who have been typecast as a certain body that I've worked with. And they'll be like, oh, I can't lose weight because then I'll lose like the funny fat girl role or I'll mm-hmm. lose like this skinny nerdy guy role. And like, it's just so interesting or the type of roles, like one of the guys I can't say, one of my best friends and 10-year client, Steve Howie. So he was on Shameless forever. Oh and yeah. Kev was like skinny fat in the first few seasons and then just got ripped. And we were, he's just like, I want to get into lifting. And we just were lifting partners and I trained him and Sarah Shahi. And we both just like, the three of us would just work out like hardcore. They became like super ripped people. And they're like, oh wow, this is amazing. But like, are we weightlifting people now? Like, is that what we do? And Steve's like, am I a meathead? And Sarah's like, oh, I just did like Tracy Anderson, which is great. Not knocking anybody. I just did like a thousand reps or whatever. Now, like I'm a girl that squats a hundred pounds. Like, and I'm a mom <laughs> that had twins. I'm like, am I a badass lifter mom? Like they did, they had to question like, what roles do I get? Am mm-hmm. I a fitness person? Is this me? And it's so funny. Like people always deify or, or put celebrities on a different level, but they're just people too. And they go through the same things like, oh, okay. Yeah. What's this? What's that? We should always reevaluate who we are, who we want to be. And if we're aligning our choices in life to be that person. And that's, I think that's what it's all about. That's life really in a nutshell. The people who are unhappy is because they have no direction. So of course they're going to feel sad because they don't know where they're going and they don't even know how to compare themselves to if they're doing a good job. Right. And all that right. matters is if you think you're doing a good job, no one else. That's it. No one else. That's so easier said than done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And on so that easy. note, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> no, and I struggle with, yeah, again, I didn't do my workouts last week. I'll own it because I don't, I feel like if we're not local and we hold everything in, then, you know, I hope if people listen to this, like my get on my Instagram, whatever, like, Hey, Phil, did you do your workouts this week? Like, I hope that we jokingly keep people accountable, not in senses yeah. of judgment, but like, Hey, I heard you say your goals. Hey, can I help you with this? Like, that's what friends are. That's what family, that's what community is, Mm -hmm. is we build each other up. And if things aren't going so south, not like, hey, piece of shit, I know you already feel guilty about it. Here's some more guilt. Uh, What's that going to do? Telling someone, hey, I noticed you didn't work out today. Like, I already know. Like, how? what about inviting me to a workout? What about helping me do, you know? Yes. I I just think that's what we need more, building each other up. Oh, totally. Building each other up. That's one of my favorite parts about my community that I have now and a good part of social media too, is that we can connect Absolutely. on there and in the groups and stuff that I've created. And it's huge because so many women, it's scary, but so many women don't have an environment at home that supports them getting healthier. And yeah, it's either because their partner's a dick. And I'm like, what man would not want his wife to get strong and healthy and be like, babe, yeah. I got the kids. You go. Yeah. They're like, go work out. Yeah well, who's going to watch the kids and make dinner? Mm -hmm. Really? Or the other side of the dickheadness, it's not a real word, (laughs) just made it up, (laughs) is who are you working out for? Who are you losing weight for? And I'm like, oh girl, that's his rocks. Like I always talk about a rock and a backpack and whose rocks we carry in our Uh, backpack. So I'm like, give him back his rock because that is not yours. That's his insecurity, but it's their environment, you know, and we can tackle relationships and later down, you know, down the road. But like right now, I want you to focus on you. And if you don't have it at home, you can come to us. It's that environment and people who you surround yourself with, like that one saying, you are the sum of the top five people you hang around with most. Yeah. That's when in LA. So that had me thinking, I'd say 80% of my clients are probably moms, women between 35 and 55. And then like 15% very successful professional gay guys and like 5% straight dudes. And I was joking, I'm like, Isn't that interesting? it's not because the straight dudes, I'm like, it's not because the straight dudes have their shit figured out. It's because they are too proud. And they think now that they're 45, they're still athletes from college. They come in on day one. Nailed it. They pull a muscle, they puke. I've had four people puke in person in my training. All are four white dudes who are, think they're college <laughs> age again. I'm like, no. And it's just like, or they're too proud to ask for help or they're just too embarrassed to admit that they need mm-hmm. help, whatever the case may be, but it's so interesting. And then everyone else is just like, no, I need help. And I want a professional, I want to do it right. And they get the results they paid for. And like, holy crap, this works. And I think, what's the magic? I'm like, they're getting help. They have a system, they have a coach. It's so funny. I see it time and time again. And yeah, if they don't have that community or support in the house, it's so much harder. They'll eat mm-hmm. perfect all day and then come back and the husband or the partner, or someone's there with like ice cream or chips. They're like, you're not fun anymore, babe. You're boring. It's like, help support me in my goal or do yeah. this. And, and that's like a lot of my uh, clients, like we do coaching calls and things, but they can also text me every day. I'm like, what happened? Like, well, this, but then like, 
the kids this and that. I'm like, hey, do we need to have like a little intervention and sit down with the family and be like, hey, support your mom, support your wife. Don't be an asshole. Let her do this thing for her. And sometimes we do, you know, then I get to be the bad guy. So she doesn't have to be the bad Mm -hmm. guy. And I can tell them, hey, Chris, hey, kids, like your mom, A, paid for this, help her. B, she's expressed this is important to her. How is she going to feel if you shrug that off? And it's it's so important to have that. And you're right. So many people don't, or they're just like on their own or they're single mom and whatever the case is. And it's like Mm -hmm. my hat's off in respect to that. But I think having the community of the bomb bombs you built up is so probably, I mean, entirely necessary for the, for those who don't have that system. You guys are the system. It is necessary (laughs) a hundred percent, but I love that that your clients like can connect with you and text you and you can be that rock, a good rock, not a bad rock in the backpack. (laughs) It's a shitty business model because like I am me and there's only so many hours <laughs> I, I know, scale. So I like, feel you. <laughs> I take new clients and do things, but I'm like, but also it makes it that fun personal level of like, you're getting what you want and it's me and it's us yeah. time. And like, if I, if we're not a good fit, then we don't work together. But if we're a good fit, if we understand each other, then you can have support and achieve the actual right. goals you want. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. I find it to feel, I, even if I didn't get, that's what they say, right? You know, you're in the right job if you do it, even if you didn't get paid. I'm like, yes. oh yeah, this is like, this, I just get to talk to people and help them do better. And then it also helps pay for my life. This is great. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was literally in the shower the other day and I was like washing my hair and I'm like, I have the best fucking job ever. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're, we're lucky. Need for that. It was so funny that you just said that. And I was like, I have the best yeah. job ever. It was probably because I just got like a good text or I don't know, something for yeah. someone. And, and yeah, his mom had got back from a, like an epic trip and they like went hiking and, and what road rafting and doing all this stuff. And she's like, I kept up and I was the boss and I have all this muscle now. And it's because I'm a bad mom. I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> Mission accomplished. That's a, oh man. It makes me so that's happy cool. for you and your community. That's what it's, that's what it's all about. It's it is. Incredible. So you're also on iFit TV. Yeah, is it TV? I love... Is it considered iFit well, TV? So, no, I mean, there is a TV app, but you know, Nord Attract, the company. Yes. So they, I think a third of the world's treadmills and ellipticals, there's like a huge cardio company. So iFit also owns Nordatrack. So every Nordatrack treadmill, basically, or elliptical, you can go on and you can jog or work out with me in New Zealand. And so I actually go to the country or in Dominican Republic or home workouts, or they have like their version of the mirror, right? That thing you work out mm-hmm. in. So yeah. I auditioned for that. Oh, didn't get so, it. So yeah, like Peloton is huge in the bike world, but it's all studio yeah. classes, right? Whereas iFit is, they do have studio classes. What they're renowned for is like, if I'm in New Zealand hiking the crazy volcano, I'm teaching you about the history, the culture. And I'm saying, okay, now we're going to go on incline for a five minute interval. And the machine follows the Strava. So when I'm jogging, going That's cool. up the hill you are. So you feel, and the screen's 20. Honestly, I'm not a huge cardio guy. I joke, I'll do it if you pay me. But I love lifting weights. Same. It's a dream <laughs> job. I get to go around the world filming and talking about the history and the language and the cultures, the thing, it's literally my dream job. And when I got it, like, oh my gosh, because I get to do what I love, fitness, health, history, language, culture. And then you see it on a screen and it feels like you're there because the machine is mimicking the workout I'm doing. It's pretty dang awesome. And I, I'm independent. I don't work for them. So I just like, I work for them as a contractor, but anytime right. there's like a gig, I'm like, I'll do it. What country are you going to? What are we doing? And like, I've got a community of people from that too. And like, oh, we did your workouts or you helped me lose this or I love this story. Like, that's so cool. That's been a huge part of my career. That is complete bonus that just came at a good time. And I happened to be the right guy at the right place of sheer luck. But uh, I guess I was prepared when it came also. Right. That's so cool. I love yeah. that. It's awesome. Oh my God, Phil. I feel like we could talk forever. I know, I was looking at the clock. I'm like, ever. we're over. Don't go. No, I'm going to move back to California. We can be friends in real life. Yes. Except our families might just like explode if we ever introduced them together. <laughs> Too much. Awesome. Too much. Awesome. Okay. How can people find you? How can they work with you? We'll put everything in the show notes too, but I was like awesome. the guest to, to be able to say it and direct people to you and social media, all of it. Give it to us. Yeah. So super easy. It's at trained by Phil trained by Phil.com. So trained by Phil for everything. I will say I'm hyper responsive on Instagram. I have the handle everywhere, but Instagram is where I am or trained by phil.com. And yeah, that's really my thing is like, if you're that person who's like, I need the one-on-one accountability, that's my specialty. We drill into the psychology. We all look at blood work. We look at everything. And it's like, how can we achieve what you want to achieve? Not only in a realistic way, but in a sustainable way and trying to find those priorities and those balances. And like, I kind of go through a, a interview in real life. If someone wants to train with me, we have coffee first. It's kind of like a date, honestly. 
And I'm like, is this a good fit? Because if, if it's going to be a bad fit, not only is it not worth mm-hmm. my time, but more importantly, yep. it's not worth your time because you're going to feel like I'm wasting money and I'm wasting this. And that would, my worst fear would be getting like the one-star Amazon review, right? I'll say no to a million people before I'll take someone on that I feel like isn't ready. But if you are ready, uh-huh. like, I love this. This is what I do. This is what I live for. And so, yeah, at trained by Phil, trained by Phil.com, health, nutrition, coaching, all that. Also, I do Q and A's uh, every Monday, just like, hey, Phil, I heard about this. What do you think about fasting? What do you think about blood flow restriction training? Peter Tia said this, like, I'll give answers. I'll give my opinions. I'll give facts. I'll also say, I don't know. But um, I just, I'm trying to build that community of people who want to talk about stuff who maybe feel overwhelmed or don't want to ask it oh, other cool. places mm-hmm. where they're like, oh, this is a safe place. That's, you know, in a nutshell, I'm trying to be like the wellness yes. safe space. My bio is hilarious. It's outsides of a grizzly bear, insides of a Japanese anime girl. That's pretty accurate. But that's what I'm, I'm striving for is like, how can you be buff, but not be an asshole? Like, I'm not a bro, but I look like a bro. So I get the best of both worlds. Right. You do, you do look like a bro. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I've got tattoos and stuff. It's just to, to not show how soft I really am, you know? <laughs> but then also I can outlift all the bros so I can keep my street cred. So it's a win. Right. Yeah. You kind of got like the fuck boy slash bro look going on. You do. Yeah, I know. I get both. <laughs> Keeps, keeps my wife happy, but then, you know, I can speak a bunch of life, you know, I try to balance it. Life is short, but it's also long, which right. seems contradictory, right. but that's my perspective. It's true. Where do you do your Q and A's at? On like a Facebook page? Do you do them on Instagram? I do Instagram. Live? Yeah. Instagram. I used to do live, but timing didn't work out in terms of people are like, well, I'm not there. Or I have people in England or Dubai. I, so know. I just make it a story post. And I say, hey, Q&A, and then I'll just, you know, I'll get as many as I can and I'll answer as many it. as I can. And then I'll screenshot the rest and like drip it out over the week. But it's always Mondays at Trained by Phil. And that's cool. same thing for, yeah, for like coaching or, or any of that, like DM, like I always start the conversation first. We see if it's a good fit. I talk on the phone. I really take time to get to know if it's a good fit for both of us. And uh, if not, mm-hmm. hey, just more people to talk about fitness with it. It's a win-win. Sometimes you just, it's not a good fit, but you still get a friend, you get a person out mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, that's so important. I do the same thing. Like I talk with people, like you can't just join. Yeah, my group. and you do your free classes and stuff. Like it's so important that like, and I guess we get mm-hmm. to be lucky enough to be at our level where like, it's not make or break. I need this thing or I will not pay my grocery bill. I, know. Like, I understand that's a luxury, right. but as a result, I believe we can provide much better value and service. So it's, uh, you, get what, yeah. you get what you pay for. Absolutely. Oh my God, will you come back on? I would love to, anytime. Yeah. If you can't tell my uh, biggest flaw is being a piece of shit that talks too much. It's like, it's not your podcast, Phil, but I don't know. I'm excited. And I was particularly excited to be on your podcast. So I feel very grateful. Yay. Oh, I am a firm believer that everyone is exactly where they're meant to be at this very moment. And I think like, I, I don't know yet why, but we were meant to meet. We were meant to talk. We were meant to like do this and put this message out. I'm so glad that we have another episode going out of just speaking the truth and, you know, talking about the Barbie movie and being real and yeah. well i go ahead no, no. see there i am Break no down. you're fine let's edit it out no i'm kidding we're not gonna wait no, I was, I was go gonna ahead say, what like, do you say before the pre-recording before this and this is like what do you want to get out of this to all you moms all the listeners out there i'm like well really i just want to talk because my the marketing is me yeah full transparency i, I would love to train more and, and i have a book but i didn't even talk about that because what i actually care about is the fact that life can be overwhelming and especially for moms or things. And like, I feel like in a world where everything seems too much and too hard and too confusing, my actual message is, Hey, let's find a way to make it realistic and doable. So it's not overwhelming mm-hmm. or so you don't feel guilty. So that's, if you made it this far, you've listened to the whole episode, right? So like, what did you come on to talk about, Phil? I came on to talk. I came to talk with Melissa about life and how confusing the fitness wellness space is. And honestly, just <laughs> to be like, Hey, if you're lost, cool. So is everyone. And if they're saying they're not lost, they're just lying. And there's a lot of lying out there. Right. And that's one thing so I true. promise is in my social media and my fitness is no, it's never going to be lying. It's going to be, Mm-mm. okay, here's where you messed up. Here's where you did better. Here's where you did great. And here's where you can improve. And just being honest mm-hmm. with yourself and with your coach. And that's that's the way to a, a good life, a healthy life. Yeah. God, and we just need more people like that out there. We need them out talking and speaking and change this whole I don't know, distorted image that people have of food and fitness and health and yeah. how to get results. So it just makes me appreciate you coming on here even more. Well, thank you. Both. And hopefully we can have you back and keep this conversation going even more. I would love that. So nice to be here. I appreciate you. <laughs> Bye, mom. Everyone.
<laughs> yes, yes. Check out the show notes. Make sure you follow Phil and click on the links. Go work with him if you if that's something that you feel you need to do and you're drawn to. But we will definitely have you back. Keep this conversation going. And thank you again. Love it. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy until next. This podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regards to the subject matter covered. This is given with the understanding that neither the host practice of the practice or the guest are providing legal, mental health, nutritional, or other professional information. If you need a professional, you should find one.